So first things first, armed militiamen, you already know the news, armed militiamen have taken over a federal building inside of uh, Oregon. Um, you know, to give perspective, the federal building is basically a rustic outlook um, where they would go and spot forest fires or spot different things. Um, but it's still a federal building, right? There, there's no doubt there's a federal building and it has been taken over by armed militia men. Um, where do I even start with this? The, <laughs> the backlash from Twitter, I mean, the, the hashtag y'all Qaeda, um, uh, hashtag yeehottest, yeehottest, I can't even pronounce that one, Wysis, vanilla Isis, it's just, it's, when no one else is going to bring any type of attention to an issue, you can count on Twitter to do it. And um, correctly, in my opinion, identifying these men as domestic terrorists. And, and that seems to be um, the crux of the debate, right? Are they domestic terrorists or are they patriots? The first thing that's interesting to me is the fact that we even consider that debate in the first place. If anyone else, everyone has been saying this all weekend, but it's my first time saying it on the show, so I'm going to say it. If anyone else of any other race, religion, ethnicity, other than white Christian men, particularly conservative men, did this, they would instantly be labeled terrorist. They label Black Lives Matter terrorist. They, lab they label every Muslim, whether they pe they're peaceful or whether they are militant, they label them terrorists. If any other group, I mean, they label the Black Panthers terrorists, the original and the new. If any other group of any other race, religion or ethnicity did this without question, they would be considered terrorists. Now. That's the very first problem is that we're having this conversation whether or not we should, you know, no, they're patriots, they're, they're militiamen, they're exercising their Second Amendment rights. <clears throat> so the hypocrisy is glaring. Everybody sees it. Everyone knows it. Um, everyone that's remotely sensible, everyone that um, even remotely wants to be equitable in how we view people in the media and on the national stage. This problem with the militia guys in, in Oregon, and I'll get to some of the, the background, but, but I guess the commentary comes first and then I'll give you the background. Um, the problem with the militiamen, it, it stems to the same problem we have with every time there's an act of violence by a white man, particularly white conservative men. They have no problem labeling white um, liberal men as terrorists when they do something um, either that is a clear clear act of terrorism or even just protest, right? You know, they they would look at, um, uh, let's say, I don't even want to throw out names right now because I don't want to start the whole conversation of, of the guys President Obama used to pal around with, right? I don't want to throw that around. But, you know, it, it's a particular brand of Americanism. It's a particular brand of American that they consider no matter what actions they do, they consider them either a patriot or they consider them deranged and mentally unstable and they were just a good guy gone awry and how did this, this good kid become such a trouble child, right? We give this much leeway to a particular type of person, namely white people. But if you drill down a little further in terms of armed rebellion, sedition and treason i mean we roll out the red carpet to white conservative men and here we are on full display in in oregon um now here here's where i think it's worthwhile parsing the difference between uh, giving you some of the background right um <clears throat> what's actually going on is that there was a protest that started up over the weekend in support of two ranchers a father and son um ranchers last name hammond right <clears throat> these two ranchers were sentenced previously and spent time in jail for arson. The family contends that they were, and the family attorney contends that they were doing a controlled burn of their property to keep an invasive species of plant from overtaking their, their crops. 
Uh, the judge and a jury didn't agree. They concluded that this was arson. So much so that when their first sentence was up or they were released prematurely, the judge resentenced them to five more years each. And this is the reason, this was the impetus behind the original protests that led to the occupation. I got a little headache tonight. I'm thinking about Papa Excedrin in a minute. Here's where it gets interesting. The father and son duo that were that, that uh, will be serving five more years for arson, they, are, they have turned themselves in. They've turned themselves in and they are prepared to serve their sentences. So the question that comes up is, who are these people who are doing this protest and occupying the property? Turns out, everyone knows, I'm just giving it to you because we're just now getting back together, but you know all this. Uh, but I've got some good commentary about it. It turns out that it is Amon, Amon, whatever you want to call him, Bundy, the son of Clive and Bundy, who became famous in 2014 because of the uh, the standoff where you had all of this imagery of militiamen coming from around the country, gathering to protest against the federal government that was demanding that Clive and Bundy, they had the nerve to demand that Clive and Bundy pay his back not necessarily back taxes, but fees that he owed for his uh, cattle grazing on federal lands. Because the, because, because the federal government refused to let Clive and Bundy have a handout, he and his sons and militiamen from all over the country uh, had a standoff. And so this is really part due. This is part two of this. This is Amon Bundy went and rallied at the protest in favor of the Hammonds but that protest broke off into something separately and they went to the federal building and they occupied it, declaring that they are going to protest or they're going to occupy it for years to come. All the while, the most interesting part of all of this is that the father and son Hammond team, um, the ranchers, they have denied or they have repudiated actually Amon Bundy's actions. They say that he doesn't speak for them and he, they say that um, he doesn't represent them. And accordingly, they've turned themselves over to the police to serve the rest of their term. Now, with all that backdrop, the true story is, is really, I think, almost threefold. But let's, let's maybe two. Let's go with two. The true story is the, the most interesting part is that at what point can any other race, ethnicity, or religion occupy with weapons? any part of this country without feeling the full force of the local, state, and federal forces. A lot of people are trying to compare this to Ferguson. And, and of course, there's a Fox, it, you, can, you can almost guarantee every time something like this happens, Fox News is going to put up a black person to say all the dirty crap that they can't say. They're going to say that these guys, this is what the Darissa, whatever her name is, has said on Fox News, that these guys don't represent, um, that they're not a threat because they're not black thugs or they're not a threat because they weren't looting. But I want to take everyone back to Ferguson before the Friday when the sheriff, when the police chief, released the, the video on Michael Brown. Before that Friday, back in August of 2014, I believe, the week leading up to that release, we saw an unprecedented show of force by local police forces against unarmed, nonviolent protesters and the media not just against the protesters. This was before the rioting. This was before, this was when people showed up to protest. They brought out armored vehicles to quelch and shut down the protest. Nobody had a gun. Nobody in the main protest. I'm sure somebody around there had a gun somewhere, but no, no armed rebellion, no occupation. They shut down with force, unprecedented force, so much so that if you go back and watch Fox News the week 
of the shooting of Michael Brown to that Friday. It was so bad in Ferguson that Fox News themselves had to report positively on what was happening in Ferguson and against the city because it was unheard of, unseen, the way they cracked down on the press and on peaceful protesters. Now, for everyone who's trying to compare this to Ferguson, how do you explain that week before any riots, before anything happened, there were protesters out there marching peacefully and the government came to, the, the local government came to shut it down. But in this case, armed men have occupied, they have threatened violence, they have threatened an overthrow, they have threatened to lay down their lives and to occupy federal grounds for years to come. They have seized territory. And I think the FBI just showed up today. That's, yeah, the, the FBI has showed up today. So that's, the, that's, that's, the, that's story number one. Story number two is not only the lack of reaction from the authorities, story number two is the lack of reaction from the media, right? The media didn't cover it until like 12, almost 20, almost 24 hours after the fact. Social media was on it right away. Of course, social media is quicker, but no one said, there were no reporters on the scene within five hours. There were no reporters on the scene within 12 hours, like, like in Ferguson. And when they reported it, they reported it as peaceful protest. ABC News reports it as peaceful protest. Armed men, determined to overthrow or to ignore and to take federal property or consider peaceful protest while Ferguson before any before a single building was before a single damn building was burnt down felt the full brunt of all of the military grade vehicles that the that the city of Ferguson received from the federal government. Somebody in the speaker said, yeah, but it's a remote location, no danger to the public. These are armed men threatening the federal government, threatening violence compared to people who were there just protesting. Don't take my word for it. Go back into the archives of Fox News. Don't go to MSNBC. Don't go to CNN because you think they're liberal, but they're far from it. Go to Fox News and watch the reporting between the, I think it was a Saturday that um, Michael Brown was killed and the Friday, the following Friday, when the police chief released the video of Michael Brown strong arming the man in the store. That week, was nothing but peaceful protesters, the media, and these rabid military forces coming down like stormtroopers, like the Gestapo on peaceful protesters. Not one thing had been burned down. There was no threat except for the threat that they represented against the system. That's it, period. And so now you have the federal agents who are doing nothing, who, who are allowing this to happen. You have the local, state, and federal allowing this to happen. The police essentially saying, lay back, don't go there. You know, all this is happening. And then you have the media who call them peaceful protesters. There is a huge disconnect. There, there is a huge disconnect in the perceptions that we allow white conservative men with guns to have as compared to any other race, ethnicity, or religion, period. And I don't think there's any arguing that at this point. I don't think there's one person who can give me a concrete, solid retort to the way we allow white men with guns, particularly conservative, you might get away with it if you're a liberal and you have a gun, so long as you have a gun, because the only thing more important to America than, than conservative or liberal is the NRA. So you could be a liberal white guy and get away with it if you're gonna carry a gun. But most of the time, the guys who are carrying guns out at, 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 at uh, um, open carry protests are white conservative men. And we have allowed them, we have allowed them so much space that now the conversation is being cast 
whether or not they are, are, are patriots instead of whether or not they are terrorists. There's a few more things I want to say about this before I move on. This idea that they have in their head of there's this, there's this, there's this, there's this cognitive dissonance that these type of people carry in their heads with regard to their relationship to the government. They can simultaneously swear that they're there to defend the Constitution while carrying out acts of sedition to overthrow the federal government for which the federal the constitution erected and subsequent subsequently controls don't get me wrong i do believe that it's possible for the federal government to violate the constitution but we're not even dealing with that level of nuance with with these guys these guys have a they have this fundamental disconnect in their brain where they feel that they can simultaneously attack the federal government, attack the government that the Constitution erected, and call themselves patriots at the same time. Not because the federal government has violated their rights, not because the federal government has overstepped the Constitution, but simply because they disagree with the federal government. So for many of these guys, it's a matter of, is the government doing what I want it to do? And if the government is not doing what I wanted to do, then they are violating the Constitution. And so we must overthrow it because the government's not doing what I want it to do. Do you, you, do you follow that? That's what goes on in the minds of a lot of these guys. Because the government is extending rights to people with whom they disagree, the government is overstepping its reach and overstepping its bounds. And we must take up arms with Second Amendment remedies. This is the cognitive dissonance these guys exist in to the point where they're willing to die for it. There's a video um, I wanted to share. Maybe I, I have it up here. But there's a video. I'll take this caller first and then we'll I'll share the video of this guy who is bidding farewell. If you everyone who's saying these guys are not a threat, everyone who's saying these guys are peaceful, there's a video of a guy who is giving his final farewells to his wife and children. He's in tears because he fully expects to die defending the Constitution by violating it and threatening to overthrow it. 